But let's celebrate all the men in the house this morning. We give God all the praise. We give God all the glory. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Shall we lift up our hands? Let us celebrate God. Let's rise up to our feet. Let's rise up on our feet and let us celebrate Jesus this morning. Let's just thank God on behalf of all the men in the house. Let's lift up our hands and celebrate him. Who is the like you? So David, let's lift up our hands to the greatest father of all time. Come on, I want us to appreciate the greatest father of all time. Age to age, he remains the same. It does not change yet, he changes all things. Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end is his name. Come on, let us appreciate the greatest father. The father who does not faint, who does not go weary. Excellent is his name. Come and give him praise this morning. Father, we honor you. May your name be exalted and magnified. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have worshipped. Come on, in Jesus' precious name, we have worshipped. Come on, in Jesus' precious name, we have worshipped. You may please be seated. The Lord bless you. We want to thank the Lord for this opportunity today, another year, another time, another season to celebrate Father's Day. What a joy and what a privilege. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus. We want to thank the Lord for the opportunity to be alive. It is a privilege to be a father and to be called a father. And it is our prayer as well that for all our intended prospective fathers, those that are yet to be fathers and you intend to that you are married but it has not happened we're trusting the lord that this time next year we will be able to call you a father in the name of jesus not only that not necessarily uh, you know biologically but i believe that there's so many people here as well who have spiritual fathers who have mentors and that is one of the things that you might not be a biological father but you can be fathers who is even more worthy than a biological father to a lot of people please continue and know that god is uh, indeed appreciative of what you're doing and it is our prayer that as you continue in that facet that his name alone will be glorified in our lives in jesus name praise the name of the lord 
praise the name of the Lord you know on Friday for those of us who are not here the Lord gave me a song and we sang that song on Friday and I think it speaks to me personally I don't know to you about fatherhood about who I am and about my identity you know uh, that song means so much to me so so much to me when I think about it it only singles me out and not everybody but it only singles me out before the Lord I'll just sing it you know please don't mind my voice uh, I'm sure the the keyboardist will help me uh, say has come to worship you the one you say has come to worship you I sing my helper helper you are my helper be seated it is indeed a tough job to be a father and I want you to know that it is a tough responsibility to be a father you know I remember some 15 years ago there's a song that my pastor used to sing and it took me a long time one day I walked up and said pastor why do you always sing this song he said he sings that song anytime he looks at himself and God makes a way when it looked as if there was no way. So that is why he sings the song. The song says, Father me, I love the way you father me. I love the way you father me. Father me, Lord in your embrace you father me. In front of oppositions, you father me. So I love the way you father me. It is a tough job to be a father. And you know, coming here today, I sat back and I said, what else can we see on Father's Day? But I'm going to be sharing my own experience with you on Father's Day what I believe should be a Father's Day message. Now, Father's Day is a great day, and it's been said that it cannot be like a Mother's Day. You know, it's uh, for whatever reason, but we know we want to honor all our fathers that continue to labor hard, sweat and toil hard to make their families successful, safe and secure to all who are gathering their own children We celebrate you today. Let's put our hands together for our fathers. Now, today we celebrate all the fathers, intended fathers, surrogate fathers, mentors, providers to people they don't know. We want to applaud you and celebrate you because you are doing the work of God here on earth. And may his name alone be glorified in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. I titled my message this morning, The Inheritance of a Father. The Inheritance of a Father. Holy Spirit, breathe upon your word this day. Help me to deliver your word. And it is my prayer, Father Lord, that your word will be a blessing to your people. In Jesus' precious name, amen. The inheritance of a father. Now, to really think of it, what do fathers really want to leave behind? You know, it's a question that all every father should ask. As a father, when you are gone, what do you want to leave behind? 
what is the inheritance that you want to leave behind very very important that we have this at the back of our minds every time because as it guides our lives it helps us actually to be a man of integrity the man that god sees god here on earth that's what he helps us to be so what are the good things that every father must see or what are the good things a father must see to eat to leave behind for his children very imperative also that we have this at the back of our minds we're going to be looking at some of the things that fathers need to be careful about to leave behind as an inheritance for the children and like i said to us i'm speaking from my own views in my 14 years of being married 15 years very soon this is what i have seen 13 years of being a father this is what i have seen and i believe looking around the world in africa in north america being privileged to be to south america i have seen that these things are very very important and i want every father to note this that if you are able to live by this principle these principles and these precepts you are leaving a legacy and an inheritance that your children will celebrate for the rest of the days of their lives proverbs 13 22 says it says something very very important proverbs 13 22 the scripture is an instruction scriptures instructional scripture which every father need to be mindful of so what are some of the things as we look at it that every father should look at proverbs 22 verse 1 says a good name i want to believe that the first thing that every father should enforce as an inheritance that you want to live with your children is a good name can i hear you say a good name come on church can i hear you say it louder a good name now proverbs 21 22 verse 1 says a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold if every day as a father when you're living the house and what drives you is to leave a good name for your children you have done very well we live in a world today that your name defines who you are not money not your properties not an empire but a good name now a father must put his name on the family as we know that the, the father's responsibility is to put his name upon the family this is a huge responsibility we must understand that a name is not just a sound that people respond to but a name carries what an idea the moment your name is mentioned it gives people an idea about you and that's why we need to be very careful as fathers one of the very best gifts you can leave for your children is a good name it doesn't just a name is not just a sound that people respond to but a name carries an idea number one number two it carries an image of who you are people don't need to see you but the moment your name is mentioned they have an image of who you are number three your name a good name carries influence it's either it makes way for your children or it shuts the door upon them it's influential there's some places you go today just mentioning your names it changes the dynamics of everything the way people welcome you they might have welcomed you before in a way that is that it wasn't pleasant but the moment they now hear that this is who you are how many people has that happened to before they will now come back and say oh we're sorry uh we're so sorry uh, we, we just want to you know uh make sure that we greet you well now because they've now seen that there is something that is synonymous to your name they will now want to recognize that name so they want to do what comport themselves to what the name stands for again as fathers your name shows who you are and how the world perceives you so it's important when you're at work when everything is going on at work when people tell you do this do that remember all those things that your name can be a gold to your children or your name can be the otherwise again we must understand that your name is not just a brand your name is what it's not just a sound it is your brand it is your brand it is your brand a brand when we talk about coca-cola everybody knows what coca-cola is because it is a brand 
and they did the same thing so today in the bible when we talk about the man called abraham we all know what abraham stands for because god swore by himself that every man on earth will be blessed through abraham so your name is a brand you must protect it and leave it a good way for your children a name can represent sincerity or dishonesty can represent arrogance or humility can represent laziness or industrious can represent confidence or timidity can represent spirituality or carnality praise the name of the lord just imagine the name judas what comes to your mind how many people have you heard that they named their children uh, son or daughter judas just hear the name hitler you don't know whether it's john hitler Adolf hitler simon's hitler the moment you hear hitler what comes to your name what comes to your mind it gives you a picture that is the same thing that every father must leave that legacy for their children the best inheritance you can give to them is a good name a name that they are proud of a name that brings protection to them a name that anywhere they go when they mention it they are safe just imagine today you go anywhere and you mention your name is mandela imagine the way people will perceive you whoa is it nelson is it john just the name alone paints a picture and it gives an image also in this city when my children mention my i always tell my children your dad is a pastor so be careful how you mention your name there are places that i go to i just walk in there i was shocked one day my wife and myself i think we went somewhere and it was a caucasian lady i just i said how are you she said i know you she said come here i know you ah, i know you I said i hear your voice on the radio are you the one i said yes wow good to put a face to the name just like that imagine we had gone into that office and we had made mockery of everything there your name is the number one thing inheritance that you can leave with your children don't mess it up i want to beseech every father as you go out there to look for things to build a future for them make sure that you don't build a future at the expense of a good name for your children praise the name of the lord praise the name of the lord my question today is this in this city when your name is mentioned what do people say if they put your name now on facebook and say how many people love this name what will people respond to the number one inheritance for every father to their children is a good name can i hear you say it a good name every father lift up your right hand say father i vow today come on every father i vow today by your grace i will leave a good name as an inheritance for my children may the lord help us all in jesus name number two thing inheritance that you can leave for your children is a loving and secured atmosphere at home it has been discovered psychologists have said it that a lot of children that are disturbing the world today is because they are unsafe at home when a child is safe at home how many children today when they go to school look forward to coming back home one good thing that every father should long to leave for their children is a loving and secured atmosphere at home isaiah chapter 32 verse 18 niv version says my people will live in peace, peaceful dwelling places a secure home in undisturbed places of rest meaning that when they're coming home no matter the trouble and outside the moment they step into the four walls of the house they open the door they know there's security for them the home is where the family lives so it must be secured whether rented or owned it must be secured a home can be a castle but it's hell but you can live in the basement and make it heaven praise the name of the lord a father is the atmosphere creator for his home he must set the atmosphere for either being timid or caring and excited you have the control forget what they tell us they you know the thermostat in the house that is your your temperature controller no you are you can set it to be cold and you can make the house hot you can set it to be hot and you can make the home to be as cold as a deep freezer so you are the atmosphere what creator of your home you must make sure 
that you create an atmosphere of love, secured environment for your children. Trying to instill respect or honor for you as a dad doesn't mean your kids must be scared when you are home. It doesn't mean the moment they hear the door open, everybody runs and cover their faces on the duvet. They go on the bed and cover it up. You know, that used to happen back home. Yes, it helped, but in this environment, it will not help. You know, some of us back home, we are watching TV. The moment you hear the car in front of the house, you know, those days with the TV that used to have a wardrobe, some of us will use, you use key, you use knife to open it. The moment you just hear the car like this, everybody, you carry your book. But that is why it will just touch the head of the TV. It will be as hot as an oven. Praise the name of the Lord. We don't need that. Let's create an atmosphere of love for our children. Let's create an atmosphere of love. That is the number two inheritance you can give for them. Because the moment they know that no matter the challenges outside, they come back home and they tell you they know they're safe. They know they're safe. They know they're safe. Was it two weeks ago, you know, as my son was getting on the bus, they were rushed, somebody punched him and he hit his head on the floor. Two, he broke two teeth. And, you know, I said, the moment they called me, I said, yes. I said, Holy Ghost, Angel Gabriel, it is war time. I said, we're going. But the, I think the, uh, the, the principal called and said, oh, we're looking into it. Mr. Somi, we are I said, no, 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 I'm coming there. I want to know the child. Because that hand must not, the hand will wither. I want to know the child. You know, they said, no, 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 they're looking into it. I said, okay. So, I, I, could, I just did what I, they said, okay, you know what? Um, it has been reported to Calgary Board of Education. Every that that going to pay thousands of dollars. I said, I'm not interested in the dollars. Don't, dis, don't, don't dispute and don't ridicule the, the honor and the confidence of my son. Are you telling me that coming back home is not safe for him on the school bus? So we let that go. Barely a week after again, somebody pushed him again. He hit his head on the, on the floor of the bus. So I said to them, I said, no, this one, Holy Ghost, we are going. So the following day, I got to school. The pastor the teacher said, Mr. Somi. I said, no, no, no. I want to know the child. I want to know that child. I want to know that child. Said there were, said, please, wait. I said, I want to know the child. And when I got back home, I told my son, I said, you're not going to school today. I said, I saw your principal. I mentioned the name of the principal. I said, this was what, that's the name. He said, yes. I said, I've spoken. I told her that the third time it happens, heaven will break loose. I said, daddy, Yes, hey, that's her name. You saw her? I said, yes. So that you spoke to her? I said, yes. That is the way it should be. Not that anything will happen to our children. You just say, probably it's his fault. No! You go there and attend to it. We must create the atmosphere of security for them. That when they come back home, they know that they are safe. They know that they are safe. A father builds love into the home by loving the woman of the house. Let them know that you love the woman of the house. Let them know so that as they're growing up as well, you don't need to teach them that they need to love the woman that will come into their life. They see it naturally. When they see that you love the woman of the house, everything just falls into place. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Let the men stay at home with their wives to bring up their children. We were told, don't be too, yeah, you know, psychedelic. Don't, don't, don't be too, don't be a workaholic. It's all about work. No. Don't let the work deny you of a great future with your children. Please, it's important that we understand this. Number three, thing inheritance that a father should live with the children. Provision of sustenance for the family. Provision of sustenance for the family. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 6 says, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those in, the, in his own house, he had denied the faith, and he is worse than an infidel. Every family needs money to survive, whether we like it or not. Every family needs it. And it's the sole responsibility of the father to make sure that there is provisions for the house. Thank God for mothers in this part of the world that they are working. We give God the praise for that. But it should be the sole responsibility of the man to make sure that there's provisions in the house. Let me let you know something. The fact that you long for it, God has a way of recompensing for you. 
There might not be any job outside there, but God sees your heart that you are doing something to bring something on the table. He will open greater doors for you. Don't just sit down, fold your hands. Yes, she's a nurse, she's working. Yeah, let me enjoy. They, they, no, 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 no. Two is better than one. That's what the Bible says. For they have a better reward for their labor. So you must understand that. You are the sole provider for your home. Traditionally, it is the father's responsibility to provide for the family, but today's mother also works, which makes it easier on the father. The father has to see to it that the home is well catered for despite the assistance from his wife. For fathers to be, please start to save towards your own family. Save your money. Leave all the Gucci's, all the Michael Kors. You know what? They fade away. A lot of people go and get married today when they don't have what it takes to sustain their homes. There is time and season for everything. We must understand this as parents, as fathers, as mothers, that don't mortgage, don't sell, don't use, you know, that what you should use to sustain your home. Don't use it to buy a shwebi. Don't say, you know what, ah, how will it be? I'm the only one that will not go. If you don't go, are you the one celebrating? Are you the one celebrating? As a matter of fact, if you don't go, they will even know that you never came. Don't because of that deny your children. Oh, they, they, they sent something from there, from school. Buy this. You know, I say, ah, hey, this one, I should be, this one, I should be, this one, I should be. You don't even need to weigh it. Don't mortgage your future. Don't sell your future. Your future, what guarantees peace of mind at the end of your life is a well brought up children. When in the time of your resting, you see them excelling. Not that the time that you should be resting, they're not excelling. Praise the name of the Lord. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Come on, may the Lord help us in Jesus' name. I said, may the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Please save for your future. Save for the future. It's very important. It's very, very important. Number four point in the inheritance that we can give to our children, cherished experiences and lifetime memories. Wow, it's very, very important. Something happened not too long ago, I think, I was flipping through, you know, my iPad, and my daughter saw there was a place we went for. We went, you know, we visited somewhere, you know, was, I think it was in Houston. We visited that place, and they saw it. Ah! She remembered the place. Said, Daddy, when are we going back? When are we going back? When are we going back? I could see the expression on her face. I said, Lord, give me money again. If she could feel that way, imagine your daughter feeling that way every time. Imagine feeling that way every time. We need to make sure that we live an inheritance of cherished experiences and lifetime memories. There is a way that good memories sustain the marriage. Good memories sustain the home. There is a way that every child, that times that children wants to go wayward, but they remember the experiences of their fathers. And they say, no, no, no. I will not bring this shame to the home. Praise the name of the Lord. Philippians chapter 1 verse 3 to 5 says, I thank my God every time I remember you. I remember you because you have done something good. Who remembers someone who has not done anything good? Nobody does. It's very, very important that we understand this. Every family has their own stories and pictures as they grow. Fun stories, exciting and sad stories as they grow. Every family has a story and this is life. It is important to create stories with pictures for the future. The day I was getting married, yes, silver and gold, my father has, he gave me all that he could, but one thing he brought again, my fifth year birthday, the picture I took, you know, I, was, I think it was a three-piece suit, it was a three-piece suit, yes, you know, I was posing, he just brought in a brick frame, he said, hey, with all your shakara, see you, this was you, I said, wow. I have it in my house now. If you look at that picture, when you come into my house, you will think it's my first son. There is a way that you present and you preserve the future for them. It's very, very important. You know what? Pastor Ibuku was telling us something. She said one of the things that have helped her in life to show, to, to show above every other person in life is, is what? Is what? Exposure. She said she has started traveling out of Nigeria since the age of 13. JC's, you know, she'll go here, go there, go there, go there. So she said she has made up her mind as well 
that all our children, as we speak now, she's in Barcelona with her children. She said, all the children, they must be exposed to the world so that the exposure, there is a way exposure frames your mindset. There is a way it gives you somebody that has been confined to Calgary for 30 years and somebody that has traveled the land of Canada in 30 years, what they see is different. And when they're talking, you can tell from the way they're talking that this one lacks knowledge and lacks exposure. This one is only talking based on what is confined to Calgary, but this one has seen all the provinces. Praise the name of the Lord. As we grow older, we remember the past through our stories and our pictures. So please, let us create lots of pictures. Go places together. Share quality times. Share meaningful moments. Please spend time with your children so that when they are older, they can remember those times. They can remember those times. It's very, very important. No one else will take them to those places except for you fathers. You are the ones to take them there. Summer is coming. It might be hard. Create time for them. You might not be able to go to Disney World. Callaway Park is there. Is it not true? Every year I go to Callaway Park with my children. Every year I go with my children. Our last son, you know, there's a particular ride. He loves that one. The way the brother and the sister, they talk to him about that. Unfortunately, because of his height. So anytime they put that thing here, you know, he'll be doing like this and put him down. You know, putting that because the way the brother and the sister they talk about it, he's so excited, he wants to partake of it. So, when they go under that uh, ruler, you, you know, they also put him down. So, last time they told him, I said, No, 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 you have to come back. He started weeping. I said, Okay, let's go for it. He said, No, daddy, the enjoyment on this one is more than this one. When the brother and sister came back and they told him again, Wow, the thing spun us round, we went round. He was just looking, What are you saying? I've not partaken out of it, so you're just saying your own. There is a way it molds them. When they go back in fall to school, when their mates will be talking about what happened in summer, what do you want your children to say? Don't let your children feel less privileged by you being insensitive to creating memories and fun for them. It's very, very important that you leave that legacy. When we were growing up, and now it's not that I'm understanding it, that a lot of people that when we're in secondary school, they say, oh, I'm going to Jan. They just went to Jan. I'm going to summer holiday in Jan. We, I used to think, you know what? These ones, they're just talking anyhow. Now I understand that that exposure has molded their lives. And it has made them to live a life that is better than a life of mediocrity. So make sure that you create fun for your children. At any age, make sure summer is coming take them out take them out ride bicycles with them it doesn't need to be expensive it's the thought that counts you can go to the swimming pool with them and sit down if you cannot swim don't go to the pain no. just tell someone tie a rope on your waist and just stay there please almost all the children can swim you see all of them they are swimming if you cannot swim just sit in the water and be splashing it with them the picture we tell in the future. When we're back home, you go to the river now, don't you go? Hey, hey, with all the weeds and all the dirty things on the river, you should go and sit down in it. This one, just sit beside them. Let us create the fun for them. Praise the name of the Lord. Attend their school events. Don't let it be mommy alone. When they're going, let there be pictures of their school graduation, award ceremonies. That daddy was there. It goes a long way. May the Lord help us all in Jesus' name. Number five, fathers create the character and values of their family. You are the one that will tell them what is valuable and what is not valuable. You are the one that will tell them what a good character is. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I love this story in the Bible. I came across it, and it was yesterday. I said, Lord, wow, the Bible is just a complete book. A very good story in the Bible, in the book of Jeremiah, about the people called the Rechabites. Wow! When I read it again yesterday, I said, this is it, the Rechabites. That is what it should be. And I'm going to read that scripture to us. God spoke to Jeremiah to go to these people, the Rechabites, to learn faithfulness from them. Look at what happened. I will read Jeremiah 35, 1 to 6. The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Go unto the house of the Rechabites and speak unto them, and bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers, and give them wine to drink. Now listen, verse 3. Then I took Jazaniah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Abazaniah, 
and, and his brethren and his sons and the whole house of the Rechabites. And I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the chamber of the sons of Anna and the son of Iglalea, a man of God, which was by the chamber of the princes, which was above the chamber of uh, Maseah, the son of Shulam, the keeper of the door. Look at verse 5. And I set before the house of the house, I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites pots full of wine and cups. And I said to them, drink ye wine. Look at what they said in verse 6. And they said, we will drink no wine. For Jenobad, the son of Rechab, our father commanded us saying, ye shall drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons forever. They remembered what their father told them. They remembered what their father told them, that you shall drink no wine forever. God told Jeremiah, bring them into the house of the Lord. Give them pots of wine. Said, begin to drink. They said, no, 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 no. We will not drink. Our fathers have told us that we will not drink. Even in verse 6, verse 7, when you go and read verse 7, they told Jeremiah again, said even their father told them they should not build houses. Said their father had told them never forever, as long as you're a member of this house, should you build houses what values have you given to your children have you told them what is right what is not right have you told them what is good what is not good have you told them who god is god said to in in, in, in the scriptures about abraham say i know abraham for which he would teach his children after me what have you taught your children so that when you're gone they're able to know that this was the legacy that you left for them it's very important the Rechabites, their father taught them and forever they decided that none of them would taste alcohol. Have you taught your children not to drink alcohol? Have you told them not to smoke? If we have, we shouldn't have people drinking marijuana. Even if they legalize marijuana, some of our children, our children should still look at it. Whether you legalize it or not, it's not my, it's not my forte. It has nothing to do with me. We have to let them know the values of what is acceptable before God. Praise the name of the Lord. My question now is, as a father, what have you taught your children? Number six. Very, very important as well, quickly, so I can wind up. Equal and unconditional love for all the children. <laughs> this is very, very important. Very, 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 and I'm telling you personal experience. I saw this growing up as well. Very, very important. James chapter 2 verse 1, NIV. My brothers and sisters, believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. Believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show what? Favoritism. Don't show favoritism amongst the children. Oh, mommy's boy, mommy's boy, uh, daddy's girl, daddy's girl. So the other one, is it grandpa's girl? Daddy's girl, daddy's girl. Oh, here comes mommy's boy. Look at mommy's boy. And the other one is thinking, if you are mommy's boy, does mommy have a twin sister? Don't show favoritism amongst your children. In the story of the prodigal son, I learned something there as well. As much as we see it as a bad story, the father demonstrated equality to them. In the story of the prodigal son, after he came back home, his father ran towards him and hugged him and said he gave him clothes to wear, that they should clean him up. The father said they should make dinner. They killed the fattest cow. But what happened then, as they did that, what happened to the elder brother that had stood by the father? The Bible said he walked out of the house. He left the place. But you know what the father did? He left the celebration and went after him. He said, no, when he was not here, you were with me. Because I'm celebrating that he came back, doesn't mean you are not longer needed in the house. Don't show favoritism amongst your children. Let us make sure that we give them an equal and unconditional love for all the children. Mommy boy, mommy's boy, is daddy's girls, let us stop all that thing. It doesn't help the mentality of our children. It doesn't help it. Help them, it only gives them segregation. They really segregate that. So you, you belong to mommy, you belong to daddy, and then the child who belongs to have that mindset that whatever I do, once I go to mommy, mommy will raise it. No, don't let us have such mentalities with our children and lastly number seven we must be ready to release our children and also to respect their choices you know i know what i'm saying now even to a 12 year old girl to release her and to respect her choices 
oh do this daddy i feel more comfortable doing this okay go and do it gone are the days when you will be the one to say okay wear this upon this upon this upon this now she says she wants to wear this let her go ahead and wear it philippians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10 look at what it says and this i pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and in all discernment verse 10 says that you may approve the things that are excellent that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of christ meaning that after you've told your children you've given them the right knowledge and the foundation of christ you can release them because you would trust their judgment you would trust their judgment you would trust their judgment we must be willing to bring them in a way whereby we'll be able to release them we're able to release them and trust their judgment oh daddy can i go i want to go with my friend to this place well why not because you trust the friend you are okay i give you my blessings to go we must be willing because there will come a time where we need to release them and do what and allow them to go remember our children will not be with us forever that they will not be kids forever please remember always that there will be times when their choices will be different from your choice please respect their choices please respect their choices i've seen what such a thing can cost even in this environment i've seen children that have been destroyed through their parents trying to impose on them what to become a life i'm telling you true life true life true life in this city true life story i've seen more than enough and fathers we need to be careful i once heard of a father i mean i've seen a situation about a father said to the son if i was not not an engineer you won't be in canada today it's because I'm a professional, because I'm in Canada, that's why I'm, I'm an engineer, that's why you're here. You want to go and do, no, you must be an engineer too. No, let them be. Let them be. Guide them and pray for them and bring them in such a way thereby when they make their decisions, you trust their judgment that that's what they wanted to be. When we're growing up, I mean, my daughter, I knew, I've always said, you know what, I look at her, I said, oh, ah, what used to come to my mind right now what she's saying is even far away from it far away from it far away from it i've always wanted her yes i you know the way when she starts to talk ah, you know my, my mom said just look at your mouth when you're talking i said okay you will be good for the media but she said no 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 she said this is what she wants i said ah and I've always told her when she was growing up, you know what, you'll be good. One day I'll see you on TV, I'll do this, I'll do that. I said, no, 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 that's that. No, 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 I don't want that. So what will I do? I will not impose on her. You might think a 10-year-old does not know. In school, don't compare your 10-year-old in Nigeria to 10-year-old in Canada. You're making a big mistake. The knowledge and what the vast knowledge that they have encountered here at the age of 10 or 11 or 12 is what 18 and 7, 17, 18, 20 encountered in Nigeria. There was a day I was doing PowerPoint. I have trapped, I, I was struggling with the thing, struggling with the thing. I said, Daddy, no, just press enter, just press enter. I said, No, 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 don't worry. That's, I said, Daddy, just press it. And she came to press it. I said, Daddy, you see what I'm saying? You know, I was looking something. Ah. You know, I just can't say, ah, I said, I, it is well, it is well, it is well, it is well, it is well. The PowerPoints that you're seeing, yesterday, my auntie is here, who is my mom's sister. My daughter did everything. All I do every week is prepare my message, I give it to her, she goes out to do the PowerPoint. She's 12. Say, daddy, don't use this one. Daddy, can we use this one? Can we have this to eat? She was the one that did it yesterday. Everything that she, she was the one that did everything. I didn't do dime out of it. So if you're thinking you're, you're 10 year old or you're thinking uh, uh, the way you were 10 years in Nigeria, that's the way you want to see your child 10 years here. No, you have missed it big time. Big time. Big, big, big time. You have missed it. At times, come, Daddy, what's the meaning of this? I said, Is that English? She said, Yes. Uh, let's go to the dictionary. Said, so what did you just say? She mentioned the word. Say, does that exist? Said, yes, that did exist. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. We go inside. The shower is there, but I don't know it. 
my son, that one, I pray does not be a professor of English. <laughs> I don't know where he gets those vocabularies from. I said, son, is that correct? He said, yes, daddy, is there. So they have a dictionary. He said, daddy, let's go. Is there in the dictionary? English that we did not see. I graduated as an engineer. I didn't see a computer. We only did theory. At age 9, 10, 11, they are already working assignment on computer, everything online. You must understand this and release them to go. Let them be who God says they are. When you do that, that is where you will benefit in their future. Don't let our children, when, we are, when they get to their future, begin to point fingers to us. Daddy, you were the one that didn't allow me to become what I wanted to become. The best we can do is what we've been told. Philippians 1, chapter 9 and 10 said, And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in the knowledge and in all discernment. Let them know knowledge. Let them be able to discern from good and bad. I was telling Brother Laulu this morning, I said I was shocked what my daughter wrote on the card she gave to me this morning. I said, Daddy, thank you for not allowing us to be sinners before God. I said, what? Does she understand? What does it mean? Sinners before God. Huh? What does that mean? Does she understand what it means to be a sinner? She does. She's doing water baptism now. She understands what it means. She prays in the spirit. She's taking Bible house fellowship teaching today. She's the one doing it. Say, thank you for not allowing us to be sinners to this world, to sin before God. When you teach them well, they will understand who God is. Please let us teach them so that we can release them. And then when they begin to fly in their great colors, we are the ones that, ah, he's my son, he's my son, he's my daughter. <laughs> he's my daughter, he's my daughter. That is the job of every parent. But you must do something for that to happen. May the Lord help us all in Jesus' name. Let us guide them always so that when they choose their part, or part of career or future partners, they can respect their choices, trust their judgments, believe in them, and most importantly, celebrate them always. Celebrate them always. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's rise up to our feet. Let's rise up to our feet. Let's rise up to our feet. I want all the fathers to just lift up their hands to receive grace from the Lord this morning. When the ministers were praying this morning, we prayed specially for the fathers that as they come, every heartache, every need in the lives of every father, the Lord will meet it today in the name of Jesus. There are fathers that are crying in their hearts. We don't see. There are fathers that are going through so much pain. There are fathers that don't even know how will the rent for this month, how will it come? How will the next meal, how will it come? They are here, but their faces are radiant, but their heart content is different. Let's just lift up our hands before the Lord this day. The Lord is saying, there is more than enough grace for you to become who I want you to become. Father, this morning, as fathers, we have come before you. We have come to celebrate you first, the greatest father of all time, to acknowledge your faithfulness to us. Father, we worship and we adore you. May your name be exalted in Jesus' name. Father, I present all the fathers in the house and potential fathers to be before you this morning. As they lift up their hands, the Bible says, I will lift up my hands up to the hills. From whenceforth my help will come. That my help will come from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Father, for every father that is here this morning, under the sound of my voice, through the internet and in this auditorium, that are trusting you for one thing or the other. Could it be a job? Could it be a home? Could it be a car? Could it be financial enablement? Anything they're trusting you for. Let the grace bestowed upon today, let it rest upon them in the name of Jesus. Father, the Bible says, crying may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Lord, I declare and I decree in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let this Father's Day be the beginning of your joyous moment in life in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for every father under the sound of my voice that whatever your challenges will be, might be, before the end of this month, they will become your greatest testimonies. Father, I pray for every father under the sound of my voice. Meet and exceed all their needs in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for every father here that your position in your home will never be void. Can I hear your loudest amen? 
what it will take to continually be a father may you never may you never fall short of it in the name of Jesus I pray for every father and myself inclusive this morning under the sound of my voice that let the oil of gladness to separate to exalt in dominion in truth in purity and in power let it rest upon every father in the name of Jesus father and I pray for every father here that may the Lord bless you let me hear your loudest voice let me hear your loudest voice may the Lord bless you may the Lord keep you may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you may the Lord make his face to shine upon you may the Lord send you out from his holy sanctuary may the Lord defend you from heaven above as you go out every day looking for what is needed to make your family the habitation of the Lord may you never experience any shortfall of accident in the name of Jesus may your step be ordered by the Lord there shall be no limit over your life I said no limit over your life I said no limit over your life this time next year you'll be a thousand times better this year go in the power of God it is well with you in Jesus precious name we are praying come on every father come on put your hands together come on 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 put your hands together for Jesus father we celebrate you 